This is Sun City News. After more than a year at the anchor desk, Hal stepped down and Norma Taylor moved up to the anchor position from her role as profile reporter. Well, I started on Sun City News in January of 2009 and I started doing profiles and each week I would profile a different resident of Sun City and their interesting, interesting lifestyle both before they came to Sun City and also when they were here in Sun City. Welcome to Low Country Snapshots. I'm Margie Bruiser and delighted to have with us today Norma Taylor. Good morning, Norma. We're very happy you're joining us today. Oh, Margie, it's so good to be here. Let's start with way back. <laughs> way when back, you were yeah. a child, what did you want to be when you grew up? Well, I think every little girl, you know, she watches TV, she watches the movie, and you dress up in your mom's heels and your mom's clothes, and you put that makeup on. And I just thought that world was so glamorous. So I wanted to be that actress on TV and on in the movies, like the Betty Davises of the world and the Elizabeth Taylors of the world, since, you know, I share that name, too. Um, so that's really what I wanted to be. I mean, over time, you change, but when I was little, that was my dream. Walk our viewers through your career. Well, I, um, my parents were immigrants when they came to this country, and they sent me to a Catholic uh, uh, elementary school. And I also went to a Catholic high school, a uh, very small Catholic high school in Manhattan. So I had to travel on the subway. From there, I got a scholarship to secretarial school. And then I got a little job uh, working at uh, a company, and then I, got married. You had a family. Yes, I did. I married uh, Rick, who I met two days after he came back from Vietnam. And we got married within the year. And we had two children. And now we have two beautiful children, a blonde and a brunette. And now we have four wonderful grandchildren. One lives in California, one lives in New York. And uh, yeah, I've been blessed. I've really been blessed. How did you manage all that? I stayed home for about 10 years to raise the family. And then um, I started going, I went to school while I was working, I went to school at night. And I always thought, oh my goodness, I'm gonna get my degree the same time my daughter's gonna get her degree. But it worked out, it worked out. Um, and as many times between working and then at night going to school, I'd be in class like, like this, and they'd say, Miss Taylor, we suggest you get a cup of coffee at the break. <laughs> but it was fun. I was glad I did it because without that degree, the companies would not have promoted me, mm -hmm. and uh, they pretty much told me that. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it, it worked out. And, you know, they were paying for it, too, so that was a good You're thing. You're right. So at what point within your marriage and having children did you go into the workforce? I started working. Um, in, 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 in Sterling Drug, and then I started working in the advertising field. I was there for a few years before I eventually went and went into the sales side at CBS. So my kids were already a little grown and they could handle the travel because Rick basically was at home at night. So it took a little transition, um, but I decided that was the area I wanted to go into. And I had a very supportive family. Okay. They hired a director of advertising and they asked me if I'd like to work for her. This was a very strong woman, um, but she knew what she wanted and she instilled in me to go get what I want. I got my education, I entered the field of advertising and I met with every single magazine, every single network. I went to all these shows and I met celebrities galore and I knew that I wanted to be in sales. So eventually, I tried for jobs in sales, and I went to practically all of them, NBC, ABC, Fox, all of them. And I finally got a job as an account executive, which is a salesperson, at Westinghouse, which became CBS. So I was this account executive calling on various companies, 
And I was thrilled to bring in my first, my first big assignment, my first big company, which was General Motors, and they didn't have them at the time. So um, within about five years from that, the vice president of sales, we moved over to CBS's headquarters, the vice president of sales left. And I marched myself into the president and I said, I want that job. And they told us, no, you're not going to get it. So I started to look around and I started to go to the Weather Channel and I went to, I went to various companies looking to see if I could move myself up. Eventually CBS came to me and said, you got the job. So I became Vice President, East Coast Manager at CBS. Well, CBS was in transition and I was there quite a few years and I went to the Grammys and I went to every Soap Opera Digest Awards and we met with all sorts of celebrities and we worked very, very hard. I traveled quite a bit. Um, eventually, um, CBS purchased King World, which is Wheel of Fortune and Jeopardy. And within a few years of that, Viacom came in and purchased all of CBS. And with that, I was pretty much let go. <laughs> it was either uh, one or the other. And they very, very nicely packaged me out. But sometimes things happen. When one door closes, another door opens. So after that, I went over to a cable network which sold country music. And it was Great American Country, which has since been bought out. And over there, I became head of all national sales and senior vice president after a certain amount of time. And I flourished there. I had a lot of people under me. I had people in Nashville, people in California, people in um, um, Texas, people in Chicago. And uh, it was great. I went to meet all the country stars. And they are such wonderfully talented people. And I went to Nashville many, many times. And I went to the Country Music Awards. It was a fantastic life. You wine and dine people as you're bringing in business. But it was a great life. And when they told me that direct response, which was the 800 numbers, the, the person handling it was leaving, they asked me to take it on. And I said, yes, I'll take it on as long as I bring it to New York and I get to hire who I want. And I said to them, and? I want a higher title and I want more money. And they said, mm, we'll give you the title, we'll give you, but no more money, but we'll give you a piece of the action. And I said, best deal I ever made. So we took that over and we brought Great American Country to record highs and so much so that it was attracted Scripps Networks, which is Food Network and HGTV. They came knocking on the door and they said, we're buying you. And they did buy us, and they moved us over to 6th Avenue. And within about two months' time, they said, hasta la vista, Norma, we're bringing in our own person. Um, during that time, though, it was a wonderful experience. I stopped working for a little bit. I got offers from other companies, but I said, I'm going to stop. And I started to say, I'm going to give back. And I did some volunteer work for the Alzheimer's Association because my mom died from Alzheimer's. So I went around all New York and talked to senior citizen groups and hospitals and talked about Alzheimer's, the causes, the, um, the, some of the things that you could recognize as, as Alzheimer's. But the most wonderful thing I did was because I could talk so much and I did a lot of talking, I did recording for the blind and dyslexic which is an organization in New York that helps people um, who can't read books and you're in this little cubby hole of a studio and you're reading textbooks, you're describing pictures and these people who have, are blind and they can't read on their own, they get these recordings that you do and they are able to function and succeed. It was a wonderful, mm. wonderful experience. That's a good thing. So are there any particular people or a person that actually influenced your choice of career and your success? There's a few. Um, the person who I worked with at Sterling Drug was um, Hillary Hinchman, and she was a very, very strong woman. She was the director of advertising, and I loved her strength. And then working at CBS, I got to meet, um, I got to meet Oprah at a luncheon and she talked about how hard she worked and if you work hard you achieve your goals you must have goals and work hard to achieve them 
I also met hurling, well, I met a lot, but a lot of strong women. Helen Gurley Brown, who was about five foot tall, the editor of Cosmopolitan Magazine. And when I met her, I shook her hand, and she had such a strong handshake. And she said to me, make sure you have a strong handshake so people take you seriously. And here, this five foot, you know, but the editor of Cosmo, a lot of strong women, and I admired them all. And I, you know, I, I, this was long before the Me Too movement. Um, but they said, work hard, and you will achieve your goal. So during your, during your 15 years or so of being in the broadcast business as a career, who are some of the special people that you met who were in the industry? There's been dozens of them, and I can't remember all of their names other than Oprah and Judge Judy and Alex Trebek. And I do have pictures with the late John Ritter. Uh, Johnny Depp, when he first started his career on 21 Jump Street at Fox, I have his picture. Very, very shy at the time, too. Tim Allen from Home Improvement and uh, MacIver, which was Richard Dean Anderson, um, Kevin James. Um, loads, loads of them. Even have the Simpsons and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And <laughs> um, they would all be at the um, celebrations of the upfronts, what they call in the network, in the television field. So they would stay and you would have your picture taken with yeah. them. And after a couple of years, I did that and then I said, well, okay. You know, it got to be old. It got to be, I mean, it's, it's terrible to say, but it, yeah. It gets yeah, it was be, just part of the job. To, yeah, it gets to be old. Yeah. yeah, it gets to be old. But you did end up at a lot of venues where you saw scads of people and people getting awards. And you mentioned to me earlier that one of your favorite groups of people were the country western Absolutely. singers. Yeah. Tell us a bit more about that. Yeah. They were, uh, I was not a fan of country music. So when I went for the job, they asked me if I loved country music. And, you know, I didn't want to say, yes, I do. I wanted to be truthful. And I just said, no, but I can sell anything. And so I had to go to Nashville a lot. So I met a lot of the entertainers down there, the Garth Brooks, the Dolly Partons, the Willie Nelsons of the world. And they are the nicest down-to-earth people you would ever want to meet. Um, and when I went to the award show and I met them all and we would meet them at the studio too because we would tape them, I really was impressed with country music entertainers. They are a fantastic bunch. And the people who watch their shows are tremendously loyal, tremendously. As a matter of fact, when I did my first upfront in New York, Reba McIntyre came to my party. And um, she was gracious enough to take pictures with all my guests there. So that was, that's, that's not everyone would do that, That's right. but a country star mm -hmm. did. <clears throat> well, you are very excited when you talk about that part of your career. Do you miss it? Uh, I'd, be, I'd be wrong to say I didn't miss it. Yes, I, I, I do, but my life is different now, mm -hmm. and I enjoy this part of my life. That was another part of my life. Mm -hmm. um, would I go back to New York City and do some of that in a... In a heartbeat, I would, but I'm a little older now, and I don't think I could travel all over the place all week long and let somebody else do it. And um, yeah, but I, I do miss it. But I have great memories. So how you got connected with Sun City TV? I think they were broadcasting out of Palmetto Commons at one point. I contacted them, and they told me to come to a meeting. I went to the meeting, and they said, come and we'll audition you, and let's see how you talk in front of a camera. I did that. At the time, Hal Meeks was the anchor. I did that, and they liked it. And they told me that they wanted me to do a Profiles um, feature on Sun City Television, which is kind of like what you do. It's a snapshots, Margie. And this way, I could do it, and I could bank them up, and then leave for New York for a month or so. And we talked to, you know yourself, how many interesting people there are here in Sun City mm -hmm. and the lives that they have led, wonderful lives. And that was so, it was so rewarding to me. So after doing that for quite some time, Hal Meeks asked me if I would fill in for him when he was away and he would take vacations as the anchor. So I did. And I did that for whatever he went on vacation. And then one day it was announced that Hal was leaving Sun City TV. And they asked me if I would take over the anchor's job. 
And I said, yes, I would. Let's try it out and see how it goes. And then I loved it. I loved it. It was great. I was dealing with a wonderful bunch of people, everyone who makes you look good and writes for you and corrects what you do. And, you know, they're all wonderful people. Mm -hmm. And the volunteerism here in Sun City is just amazing. Mm -hmm. I have enjoyed every minute of it. And pictures to prove it. And production. pictures to move it, yes. Uh -huh. okay. So you were always behind the camera in your career until you came into Sun City and became our news anchor. How did that transition work for you to be upfront and responsible for being the face of a network? Well, when I was in broadcasting, I was always in front presenting to maybe 40, 50 people in a room. But that pales in comparison to being in front of the camera, always being ready, trying to look as best you can and not flub anything, reading uh, from a teleprompter and going from camera one to camera two. And that was a big transition because I had not, I had never done that. Um, I mean, when I was a little girl, I stood in front of, you know, of the television and made believe that I was doing it, but I never was. So doing it after a certain age, when you're, you know, you've reached 60 years old, it, it's, it's, it's a little taking you aback. And I can understand when people come on the show when they're a little nervous because you have lights and cameras beating on you. And a lot of the people, when we interview them, they say, why are all these people here? I said, well, they're all part of the show. I said, really? And it, it can be a little nerve wracking. And in the beginning, it, it was. But over the years, I've uh, gotten used to it. And even now and then, I flub an awful lot. People don't see it, but I make a lot of flubs. <laughs> How many years ago was it when you walked into Sun City TV? It was, it's been over 10 years. Over 10 years, just about, yeah. Because I, I really feel that like you are the voice and the face of Sun City TV News. You are on more often than anyone else. You greet people when they wake up in the morning and say goodnight. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's been quite a, quite a trip and you're gonna continue on, I know, because you have a lot of support there. It's been a lot of fun, Margie. I've enjoyed every minute of it and working with the people that I work with has made it fun. Mm -hmm. And you get some approaches when you're out and about and say, I know you. Um, if you're not having fun, don't do it. Mm -hmm. And it's not a job. It really isn't a job. Um, and, and even your job, if you don't enjoy it, then you got to be doing something else. Yes. But we have met so many different people through Sun City Television. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so many different clubs and, and people who are in the clubs and interesting people who, who volunteer their services. Mm -hmm. It's been so much fun, a lot of fun. So as that little girl who was looking at being a movie star, do you think that you've come somewhere within the realm of achieving that through your career and volunteer work? Well, I'm no, uh, can't sing, and obviously I've never made it in the movie star business, but then again, you know, I never did move out to the West Coast, so maybe that's the reason why, Not otherwise, sure. you know, otherwise I would have been at the Academy Awards myself. <laughs> but no, I've led a wonderful life, and knock wood, I've been healthy. My family's healthy. I have a wonderful family. I have a great support group. I'm doing what I love, and what more can someone ask for? Yes, absolutely. And you are in front of a camera, and you do have some liberty as to how you project and you know your nonverbal communications. And it's it's it is acting in yes. a sense, yes. and yet a very sincere way of delivering the news. And as long as that camera doesn't get too too close, because you know, getting old now, you know. Uh, we're good. <laughs> well, we have, to, we have to admit to that. We live in Sun City and we came here to age gracefully. Oh, definitely. And the, and the people who are so active here. Yes, exactly. Amazing. Amazing. If you can't be active here, you can't be active anywhere. So what are your involvements in Sun City beyond Sun City TV? Well, you know, when I was working, I never had any time to do sports because either I was traveling during the week and then at one day during the weekend I would golf. So I still do a little bit of golf, but not as much. But since coming down here, I've taken up tennis. So I'm on two tennis teams. Um, I also play pickleball now, which I love pickleball. And I've gone and I started to do some table tennis. And they're showing, I've never played table tennis doubles. 
So I've tried doing that and I'm with someone and I practically push them off because they have to come and get the shot and everything. So I'm learning, I'm learning. Uh, and I've done bocce. Okay. So I haven't done croquet. So I'm, I'm looking for Doug Wright to teach me how to do croquet. I don't even know anything about that. And I don't think I'm doing volleyball. I just don't think I have that. Horseshoes I've done, but uh, you know, but that's enough. I can't. <laughs> Sometimes I'm, I come home and I say, oh my gosh, I'm so tired. <laughs> <laughs> did you expect that when you moved here? Never. Never in a million what years. What did you envision? You know, I, I, I envisioned, uh, you know, you think of Sun City's 55 plus group and you envision, well, as old people here. And then you go to the pool, I do some swimming, and I go to the pool and I see these people doing laps back and forth, back and forth. And so many of our swimmers have competed and they're like champions in their field. And I just didn't realize how active you can be here. And the more active you are, the better it is for your health. Mm -hmm. And I love it. I just, I just think there's so much opportunity here. I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> did you expect that when you moved here? Never. Never in a billion years. What did you years. envision? Oh, my gosh, yes. Oh, my gosh. Absolutely. These people who are winning medals and, you know, races and, and you know, they, they, they do the 5K race, they do this race, and, you know, and they're in their 70s and 80s. And yeah. you say, whoa, gives you hope, doesn't yes. it? Gives yeah. you hope. Yeah. Yes. It's never too late. Well, as you know, Margie, it takes a lot of people to put on a show, whether it be Snapshots or Sun City TV News. And we are always looking for more people, for more volunteers because people, everyone, they have their own lives to do and vacations come in, health comes in. So we're always looking for someone to step up and step in. And especially cameramen, editors, reporters, makeup people, people who can handle the teleprompter, anybody. If you feel you have a talent or if you're just interested, they should contact us because we need more people and we'd love to have you. We'll train you. Not everyone turns out to be perfect at, at, at anything, but as, if, as long as you're willing to accept some training and you're willing to devote a little bit of time to us once a week, we can come on board. And I know you do a fantastic job on snapshots and we have some interesting people here in Sun City, but we need to highlight some more of those people and they should contact you and tell them, let them, you decide how interesting their lives should be or should be on camera. Thank you so much for letting us feature you on Low Country Snapshots. Uh, you really are a star to us <laughs> and I think to a lot in the community and I know you're humble but we thank you for what you're doing and to our guests that are watching we just uh, again ask you to take up on what Norma said about coming to Sun City TV and perhaps finding the place for yourself. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for presenting a great program. Well, thank you, Margie, and what Margie said, come and join us. We have a lot of fun. So it's a lot of fun, and we convince them that it's a very enjoyable experience. Have, have you had fun doing this, Susan? I think that I've had more fun doing this than anything I've ever done with my clothes on. It's terrific. <laughs> this is Sun City News. After more than a year at the anchor desk, Hal stepped down and Norma Taylor moved up to the anchor position from her role as profile reporter. Well, I started on Sun City News in January of 2009 and I started doing profiles and each week I would profile a different resident of Sun City and their interesting, interesting lifestyle both before they came to Sun City and also when they were here in Sun City. Here with Sharon, Sharon yes. and we're sitting here on the deck chairs in the water and we're waiting for our margaritas so enjoy the lake house welcome to sun city news a big thanks to hank Druckerman, ed phelps 
and Bob McCluskey for filling in for me while I was away. Now, here are some of the stories we're going to be covering for this week's show. That's the show for this week. Send feedback to sctvnews at schhca.com and make sure you check out Sun City TV's program schedule and watch Sun City TV shows at suncityhiltonhead.org. Now make sure you tune in next week for our special year-end show. And in the meantime, I hope your week is full of only good news. For Sun City News, I'm Norma Taylor, and I'll see you next week.